Welcome once again to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. And now let's go to Off the Press, uh, where we, of course, uh, have a review of the major stories making headlines across Nigeria today. I'm starting with the Nation newspapers. Should be on your screen in just uh, a few seconds. Uh, and, of course, we'll be introducing our guest after reading through the papers. The big one that you see on your screen here, it says, Akira Dulu verdict, danger ahead, Kayamo wants APC. Also, why I want to lead the APC, and that is by Yari. Government losing millions in lottery. State get, uh, states rather get conditions to access World Bank $750 million. Also, Naira slides to 522 uh, Naira to a dollar after ban on Forex for BDCs. Um, a scary story here, it says here, yeah, Lagos Island may go under by 2050. U.S. Lawmakers halt arms sale to Nigeria, and of course, it's citing Nigeria's human rights record. It also shows up um, in other papers that I'll share. Shiite leader El Zagzaki and wife free. Uh, the, of course, a court gave a ruling yesterday, and I believe that they have been released. Abducted um, Tejina Pupi was kept in 25 camps, and also awaiting UCOM members um, die rather in road crashes. That's a sad story. Also on the nation this morning, federal government uh, Twitter begin talks over ban and Hosh Wapi faces 20 years jail term after pleading guilty. Moving on to the Nigerian Tribune this morning. The big one you can see there says uh, U.S. lawmakers block sale of $875 million weapons to Nigeria, cite poor human rights record. Also on the Tribune, Delta variant, U.S. to ship 4 million COVID-19 vaccine doses to Nigeria. APC Congresses, Buni insists on consensus option, warns against media war. Outages as electricity grid uh, collapses again. That happened yesterday. And also states get September deadline on $750 million SFTAS grant. Uh, we can also find on the Nigerian Tribune this morning, alleged homicide, court discharges and acquits El Zagzaki and wife. Police rescue 13 kidnapped Naval Engineering College students in Edo State. Uh, gunmen strike again in Imo, behead two persons. And food insecurity looms in northern Nigeria, UN FAO warns. From the Tribune this morning, let's see what we can find on the punch. Federal government lines up 36 billion naira for COVID-19 third wave. 4,261 cases recorded in 30 days. Says also the federal government told us each state will receive one billion naira before the end of July, says a Bainway commissioner. Federal government states officials meet next week, plan how coronavirus cash will be spent. Buhari Hill's judgment just is divided as Supreme Court affirms Akiridolu's victory. And also federal government moves to avert first, uh, fresh strike, meets ASU on Friday. We are in talks with bandits on 83 Kaduna Baptist students, says uh, Khan. And uh, we can also find IMN celebrates as a court frees El Zagzaki and wife after six-year detention. NYSE mourns as five camp-bound core members die in crash. And also, listen, IPOB threatens mayhem over Kanu's detention, gives August 8 deadline. One or two others, APC Congress is on the threat as Supreme Court declares Buni's chairmanship illegal. And um, also, Sam, uh, Senate names Jonathan and Sambo in 665.8 billion naira diversion demands refund. I'm going to quickly rush to the daily independent newspapers. Presidency begins search for credible successor to Buhari, and that regards the 2023 ele election. Enlist fact finding group to do checks on APC aspirants. Powerful forces plan to prevail on Tinubu to back younger candidate. Also, Nigeria to produce COVID-19 vaccine in 2022, says the PSN. Buhari considers increase in education budget by 50% till 2023. National grid collapses again as blackout spreads. And also, U.S. lawmakers stop $875 million arms sale to Nigeria. Ask Biden to reassess U.S.-Nigeria relations amid human rights concerns. Uh, we can also see here APC, Akiri Dulu, Songwo Lu, Lord Supreme Court verdict on Ondo gubernatorial elections. Court frees Zagzaki and wife says they have no case to answer. 
And also the Naira suffers its biggest fall at 522 Naira to a dollar after CBN Forex ban to BDCs. Analysts see further devaluation of Naira soon. We'll say good morning to Mr. Ezekiel Nya Etok. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, and it's always a pleasure to be on Plus TV Africa. Good to see you this morning. A lot of interesting stories, uh, some of them good, some of them really, really, you know, um, shocking. Um, I will start with the um, block of uh, arms sale to Nigeria by U.S. lawmakers, um, of course, citing human uh, rights record and human rights abuse. Um, what do you think of this? It's not the first time. I believe it happened under former President Goodluck Jonathan's administration. Um, but once again, we're seeing, you know, a similar um, situation. I, I, I think that... Um Nigerians must understand that we've become a global village and that whatever is going on is known and seen all over. A lot of times we play the ostrich. We think that by burying our heads in the sand while our bodies are exposed that we are hidden, but we're not. Everything that is going on in Nigeria today, there's, if you look at your scroll bar, if you look at the number of children that are being held on a daily basis and what is being done about it. And then there are other things that uh, maybe the effort that is being made to go across the country to bring people like Iboho back or to bring Nam Dikanu back. You know, you just want to be a rational mind and sit down and ask yourself very fundamental questions. To what extent is the federal government um, committed to the security and welfare of the people? To what extent is the fight against terrorists national? Or to what extent does it appear to be a sectional interest play? And where you cannot find that line that shows that this is a national fight, then countries like the US will ask themselves, am I wanting to be a part of um, you know sectional victimization, which they could claim it to be so. So these are things that we really need to come and sit down and interrogate. I keep using that word virtually every time because it's absolutely important that we start to think. We have enough. Nigeria is blessed with some of the most cerebral people in the whole world. And yet when it comes to our governance, we seem to have a mental block which I really can't understand. The American government, I mean, when you know America that the dollar is virtually everything, dollar, money, 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 you know, the Benjamins and all those things. But, and they come to a point of saying, please keep your, in it, $875 million, keep it. We don't need it. Go and improve your human rights records. By the time it gets to the point where the, the American government can say, keep the money. We don't want it. Then you know that it's come to a point where we, the citizens, and it brings me to a point that I always talk on virtually all the time. And that is that our focus needs to shift from those in government to those of us that occupy the office of the citizen. We need to come and start thinking of our country because it's become crystal clear that those in government and those of us that are occupying the office of the citizen, we seem to be singing from two song sheets. We seem to be speaking two different languages. We don't seem to be connecting. We don't seem to be communicating. And this is a time for us to go back to look at those fundamentals. So I'm not surprised that America is taking yeah. that. that All right. So, so be before we move on to a different um, story, does does this um, or should this, you know, be something we should worry about um, with regards to the fight against insurgency? If we can't buy weapons uh, from the United States, um, should we be worried that you know this might give the terrorists an upper hand, or you know, can we then maybe also look to a different uh, source of uh, uh, of weapons? And remember also, we, we, we spoke about yeah. Tucano, Tucano jets not long ago, sometime yeah. last week. Yeah. Great perspective there. You know, we have a way of having, I keep using, I, I repeat this word, mental block. A situation like this, the action is one. The intention, that is the reason behind the action, is important. 
They've refused to sell uh, weapons to us. Great. Why have they refused? Because if it's that they don't like Nigeria, we can call their bluff and tell them to go to hell. If it is that they think that the lives of Nigerians don't matter to the operators of the system, then for goodness sake, we should take sides with them. And now the second part is they are refusing to sell the weapons to us, affect us because of the fight against the insurgency. Now, when we take sides with them, we can pressure our government to do the right thing and appeal to the Americans to see reason to have a rethink because right now it is more of a recommendation and action has not been taken. So we that occupy the office of the citizen should come in fast to have an interface with them, an interaction, All right. and say, please, exactly what is the problem? And then bring government to commit to addressing those issues so that they can give us the weapons and then we can prosecute the war against these terrorists. Right. Um, because I'm joining those who say they should not be called insurgents. They should be called terrorists. Absolutely. I am endorsing that motion. All right. Hopefully uh, we, we can um, have a, a longer conversation, conversation about it. But let's move to, you know, El Zaki and his wife now. Uh, been incarcerated for more than five years, I believe since 2015. Um, and finally, of course, we got uh, released yesterday. Um, the IMN is celebrating. Uh, is this, um, you know, something that you're maybe also happy about? It's something that gives me cause for concern. That could have been me. That could have been my mother. That could have been my brother. That could have been my father. That could have been my uncle. That could have been my friend. What is the fate of Nigerians on social system? You know, it's one thing for you to say the man has been, you know, incarcerated for about six years. And nothing for you to know that during this period, he's lost about four of his children. During this period, he's lost his eye. During this period, his health has deteriorated. During this period, his means of livelihood, the people that he came out to say, these are my flock that I'm to take care of. At the end of the day, what level of restitution can you do as a government, as a people, to make up for such humongous monumental loss. Now, we come back to the fundamentals again. Why did this happen and how did it happen? Was it a mistake where all humans were bound to make mistakes? Or is it a certain policy of government that we must not keep quiet and allow it to continue? Why would somebody's freedom be that be that tampered with so terribly i think we need to come back to you know I, I was listening to what you were saying about hush puppy now this is a person that committed a crime and within a reasonable time the crime is addressed and like you rightly acknowledged we have held namdi kanu and then Bring him to court. Oh, he cannot be produced. All right, I give you um, the whole of August, September, October. No, no, how many months for you to produce him? During this period, what happens to his life? During this period, what happens to his family? For you to even start the process, you hit so many months ahead so that he can be brought to court. I mean, does it really make sense? Is there an intention behind this? Is it a buy time strategy? Is it, I mean, is this not somebody's life? If that guy is, is culpable, if he has committed the crime, he's got to do the time. I don't care who he is. I don't care about him. I care about the fact that we just don't care about human lives. Yeah, I, I would if also mention... If he has done something wrong, jail him. Yeah. Don't keep him. Okay, what happens if you bring him in October, I think they, they say, and then you start the trial... Four years down the line, you say, oh, he's done nothing wrong. He's discharged and acquitted. What happens to his life? We yeah. need to, to look back at our justice system and know what we should accept and what we should not Absolutely. accept. And, Absolutely. And, and still on, on El Zagzaki, you know, one, one point that I always like to make and, and remind Nigerians is, you know, there, there is still, you know, no actual questions asked about what happened on, you know, that day in 2015 when he was arrested. 
uh, where, you know, well, according to government figures, 347 of those, you know, Shiites were, were killed. Um, there's still no proper investigation or explanation of how 300 plus Nigerian lives were wasted in 24 to 48 hours. Um, and nobody still has been asked any questions. So nobody still is being probed. Um, and I feel it, you know, that's, that's really one of the part that, or parts, you know, of this conversation that I feel like we should never forget or ignore. Um, you know, and I, I don't really want to care how long it would take, you know, if it takes us five, six, seven, ten years to ask those questions once again. I feel that Nigerians should ask those questions because those were Nigerian lives, regardless of what crimes they were alleged to have been committed, they were extrajudicially, extrajudicially killed. Um, and they should never be just forgotten um, that way. Um, it, it's, yes, go on, go on. Well, you know, you can quickly respond to that before we move to something yes. else. It's absolutely important. Let me say this for the record. One day, there's going to be a real truth and reconciliation panel or commission or inquiry in this country. I'm telling you this for a fact. You said something, and I agree with you. It could take five years. It could take 10 years. But let the people who think that they've gotten away not forget history. It happened in the past. It happened in other places. We cannot forget South Africa so soon. One day, and this is where the office of the citizen comes in, I want to appeal to Nigerians. All this, you know, coming here to be able to deliberate, to be able to discuss, to be able to talk, they are good analysis, they are good, but the time, look, I've gone to join a political party. I've gone to join one, ADC, I've joined one. Let Nigerians go and get registered. Let Nigerians join political parties. Let us wake up to our responsibility as citizens. Enough of this, nonsense. look, the politicians are playing their game. They are bringing us to the turf they want to find us on, sitting and talking. And 2023 comes, they bring back their people, they do what they want to do. We come back to television and keep doing the analysis. I have decided, I don't care about any other person. For me as an individual, I'm not only joining a political party, I'm already registered. I am going to contest. If I fail, I fail. There's something that Mr. Donald Duke said, and I loved it. He said, if you try, you might fail. If you don't, you are destined to have failed already. I'm going to do it, and I'll do it to the way that my children, when the record is written, they'll say, this is what our father, this is what our grandfather, this is what our great-grandfather did. That's what I want to say. The question is, what are you and I doing today, outside of analysis, and allowing these people to run our lives and just wreck this country for nothing's sake, a country as great as endowed as Nigerians? We should wake up as citizens, stop the analysis, and join a party, any party you want. I don't care. Join Get registered, get your children to register, get your staff, get your ward to register. Let's go to that poll. 2023 is going to be about the institution and the citizens. And I tell you, the power of the citizens is always higher and mightier anytime, any day, anywhere than wow. the power of the institution because the citizens set the institutions and we get what we deserve. We want a Nigeria that works. Well, we'll see how it goes. Um, let's talk now about the dollar, uh, the exchange rate. It's uh, risen to 522, has never been this high. And that is, you know, as a result of the CBN's directive to stop foreign exchange uh, to uh, uh, bureau the, uh, uh, BDCs, basically. Um, what's your response to that? I, I, um, this might shock a lot of people. I agree with CBN. I agree with CBN. My concern is the level of sincerity. That's my greatest concern. My concern number two is the person of Mr. Emefiele. To what extent he's willing to let his conscience guide him, lead him, rule him, and like Esther, he's willing to say, if I perish, I perish. He sits down because He's going to step on very hard toes. He's going to be blackmailed. He's going to be maligned. He's going to be all sorts of things. But we've got to take some very hard decisions that will bring this economy back on track. This thing about, you know, the, the, the round tripping with cash, you, 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 the, the banks get their money. Instead of giving to businessmen, they bring to the CDBC, uh, the, 
the, the bureau the change so that they can have the differential. Why do we let the let the dollar take its 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 its, its uh, proper rate, whatever it is? We will suffer it, but if we are sincere with it, with time it's going to come down and stabilize at what makes sense. But this thing that Mr. Sanusi said, the, the former central bank governor, the revered Emir, and he said that uh, former Emir or the post Emir. He said that some people are sitting down in their parlors and raking in money in billions because of the sales of the differentials. And we that have business to do cannot find the money. And as a result, we're suffering. So I think that one, we should not do this break and quench. This was done before and then pressure caused it to be reversed to the best of my knowledge. Let's put our foot down. Let the Naira take its cause and let people be able to walk in and get legitimate money. And they, how do you explain a white man or a guy, he goes to Bureau de Change and he just buys dollars, no documentation whatsoever. I, I mean, everybody knows that. And it's not okay. That's on one hand. On the second hand, what is the policy of government? Let the banks handle it so that if you are buying a certain volume of money, we have an idea of where you want to deploy the money. Because this today, today, corruption has been do dollarized. If you want to pay somebody 5 million naira, 20 million, instead of carrying all the cash, you just go and buy, you know, dollars. People now pay bribes and, uh, you know, all this, whatever, in dollars. So we are having a high demand for dollars, not for investment, but as kickback, uh, you know, no, uh, premiums. And I think that this policy, I endorse it, I agree with it, but for goodness sake, if it is just a flash in the pan, God will hold those people responsible. But if it's something that is well-intentioned, we should uh, go along with it, and um, it's worth it at, at the end of the day. Well, um, the, a few of the comments I've seen, you know, are speaking about the commercial bank's capacity to actually handle um, uh, the um, FX across Nigeria, the, the demand for FX across Nigeria. And you know how this might, you know, you know, make also, uh, uh, well, you know, make the uh, the exchange rate continue to rise uh, because of their incapacity to handle demand for FX across the country. That those are some of the concerns. Um, but hopefully, you no, know, they will know. find find a balance at some play at some point. Challenges give you opportunity for you to seek practical solutions. Central bank oversees the commercial banks. Let them set up an independent report desk where, you know, there's something I set up. I'm not, I don't know to what extent I want to talk about it here now, but, you know, I set up what we call the national eye, okay? The biggest, the best way to fight fraud. You know, fraud is afraid of light. It's afraid that, you know, you know, you know, fraud thrives in secrecy, in darkness. The moment you bring in light, where you don't know who is watching you, you are bound to be a little more careful. The EFCC, I'm happy they've set up an arm of it, which they call the Eagle Eye. I had proposed this over two years ago. I still think we need to have the National Eye. And I'm still working with it, with them, you know, maybe the Senate committee and to see what can be done so that when people know that when you do something funny, somebody else can report you and get action, people will do the right thing. The commercial banks, you know, a lot of times people make things to be very difficult. Wherever you see people making things to be difficult, there's a reason. They are to discourage you so that they can distract you and do what they want to do. The commercial banks who have been making money from this can deliberately frustrate the citizens and get the citizens to start to shout, go back to you know, the, the Bureau of Change, go back there. They could be doing it deliberately. So the central bank, as of today, should know that and set up a policy, a principle, where they can very terribly, seriously, you know, penalize the commercial banks that frustrate this working. Because if it works, Nigerians will move on. But if they can frustrate the process, oh, we are processing it. Let them give timelines, let them give guidelines, let them give principles, and this sort of decision should not have been taken except they are putting those principles in place, those guidelines. And anybody that dares to flout it becomes a, 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 an, an economic saboteur, a national economic saboteur, and should be dealt with with a very, very special hand.
Yeah. I believe this is the doable. Central bank just needs to put its acts together and get it done. Well, it's back, back again, you know, bringing, uh, you know, the conversation to systems and how uh, we should be able to improve on the way systems, you know, run, you know, in Nigeria. It shouldn't be right. based on relationships or, you know, or personalities. It should, it should be simply setting up institutions and systems that, sim that just work. Um, and if we don't get to fix those, you know, then we're going to, you know, remain in, in the same circle. Um, the corruption may not go. And no matter how big the eye is, um, Mr. Ayer talk, you know, like you mentioned, um, no matter how big this Nigerian eye is, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, for me, if you don't have systems that check corruption, you will continue to catch people, but people will continue to look out for ways to beat uh, being caught. So it has to be systems that simply just are in place to ensure that um, the graft, you know, doesn't well, continue me, to happen. Let me, let me say this. You need to think through this. Who is to set up the system? The person that is deliberately subverting the system so as to benefit from it? Is that the person? That's against the law of self-preservation. That is why we need to go back to leadership recruitment. There is too much governance in our politics. Whereas there should be too little politics in our governance. People are getting their governance has become a commercial enterprise. We need to sit down. A man who knows that he cannot get free, fair, credible election, he cannot get elected on free, fair, credible principles. You want that man to give you credible election. He's not going to do it. So it is time for us, the citizens. You know, I said this some time back. I went with the former... Um, um, you know, CME, the Madam Konjo Iwela, to the World Bank on a, pro a project on housing, you know? And I was, I was pleasantly surprised, shocked, about when at that place, during the meeting, we talked about the Land Use Act, you know, in Nigeria. It was the World Bank officials that said, Ezekiel, this is not going to change. Let's walk around it. And that expression has continued to reverberate in my mind. Let's right. walk around it. These people are not going to give you the systems and you are talking and processes. They will not. But we, the citizens, have to find a way of walking around to bring people that mean well. If today we want to have a, a governor in Anambra State, what are our profiling pra parameters? What are the people of Anambra State thinking? Are they thinking they are party? Are they thinking they are, they are clansmen or are they thinking competence and their state, how they can recruit the best? Maybe one small party has somebody that is not very popular, does not have too much money. What stops the elite in Anambra state thinking of their state and putting their weight behind that person, putting their institutions, putting one, the, 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 the system is bigger than APC. The system is bigger than APGA. The system is bigger than PDP. The system, the people are bigger than all those three parties combined. All right. And all it takes up. is for the elites to come in and say, we need something that makes sense. Profile those people, wait, put their weight behind the best, and we'll have a, a new system of people defending whoever is the most competent. That right. will force parties to start bringing the most competent as candidates and not just bringing anybody and thinking they'll win because of their party. Ezekiel Yanni Talk, thank you so much for your time this uh, Thursday morning. Always interesting hearing your perspective. We wish you a great My day pleasure. ahead. Thanks for having me. All right. Stay with us. Uh, the 29th of July in 2018 and in 1966, I'll be sharing with you what happened on this day many years ago.